Ron, tell us about the genesis of the Little Wing Autogyro, specifically why you chose a tractor design. Well, I didn't choose a tractor design originally. I learned to fly in a Benson gyrocopter. I built this thing, and you know, if you know the histor history of a Benson, you basically, you read a manual and it tells you step by step how to fly it. Well, in the course of being associated with people of that ilk, if you will, uh, a lot of people were getting killed on them. And it seemed to be a universal type of thing. Uh, you could pretty much predict what the scenario of the accident was. It was always called a, a bunt over or porpoising, they called it. Well, during this period of time, I also was interested in the history of an autogyro. And so I started reading back. And it didn't take long to understand that the original autogyro configured like this didn't have that issue at all. It was not even a factor. So, you know, just a little simple, it's not complicated, it's not rocket science. You know, if you've got a long arm and you've got a big tail and you've got your engine positioned where it's pulling in the middle of, of the mass, it doesn't have any proclivity to do anything but go straight. So that's where the thought process began. And I happened upon an old wrecked Piper Cub and utilized the airframe and I built up a, a rotor mast and outrigger landing gear and made this thing into an autogyro and I was the idiot of the airport, you wouldn't believe. Anyway, I did. I learned a lot from it, but I didn't have, or there wasn't a, a rotor system large enough for that size of an aircraft. You know, I wasn't building rotor blades and there just wasn't anything in the, on the marketplace. So I just decided to scale it down to accommodate off the shelf items I could get. So that's where this scale came from, was just a basically look sort of like a cub, make it smaller. I built two to start with. One had a McCulloch drone engine that I actually took off the Benson, and then the other one had a Volkswagen engine. And I built them and carried them around to the shows uh, side by side and f would fly both of them. I, I brought them here in 96. This one still has a 97 sticker on the windshield. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. All right, but at the same time, you did take a few historical touches on this one in particular. You've got a, uh, a Rotec radial engine, which just looks right. It looks right. It's the most expensive thing, single item, I've ever bought in my life. I drive a 300,000 mile Ford pickup, so I can haul around a $15,000 engine. <laughs> but after, you know, successfully flying this thing for about 10 years, it has seemed the right thing to do. When this engine became available, this is engine number three, by the way. This is one of their earliest engines. Second one to fly on an aircraft. So I was doing some of their groundwork, you know. But uh, it's, it's been a good engine, and it sure made a difference. And I, you know, I would carry this thing to the shows at, for, all the way from 95. Didn't draw a lot of attention, but when I showed up at Oshkosh with that engine on, I flew it into Oshkosh, and it was like a magnet, you know, just something magic about those engines. I want to ask you about another interesting thing you've done on this machine, and that's the redundant control rods. You don't hear about a lot of control rod failures if guys maintain them properly, but sure. you've gone a step further looking at your triple redundant system, it looks as though if one of the outside rods went, you'd still have control, but maybe with more control force. Have I got that right? Uh, not, you wouldn't have more, more control force. I've flown it, actually, with rods loose, and uh, you, you can't even tell the difference. You know, you're pivoting off the center, so if you lost one of them, you really don't notice a leverage difference. You don't hear of a lot of failures, but if you go back, there have been some. This pretty much gets rid of that worry. What are some other things that you've tried to do on this machine that are different from what you usually see on a gyroplane tractor or pusher? Okay, one of the things that you worry about in a gyroplane, since the rotor is driven pneumatically, in other words, it has to have airflow through it, what happens when you unload the rotor? And uh, originally, we just talked about this bunt over thing where you are, your mismatched physics cause the thing to tumble forward. But if you think about it, if you've got a powerful engine like that, uh, there's also torque roll that if you were to unload the rotor, you know, when you're flying, that rotor is countering that, right? But if you unload it, the thing could also spin around this way. So I've got differential tail planes on this that are adjustable. And if you take the thing and put it on load cells and level it and run it, you can get a pretty good idea of what, 
how that's affecting the twist, and you can adjust those tailplanes to counter that. So you're trying to cover all your bases. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. All right, this, this is not for the faint of heart. I mean, the, the Benson was famous because any guy with a hand drill and a screwdriver could put, could put one together in a few hours in his garage out of bolted aluminum tubing. This is welded chrome molly, a lot of it is. What should someone who would be interested in building one of these know about getting the plans and time to requ required to build one? They shouldn't be faint of heart. You said that already. They, they should have an idea of what's involved in building an aircraft. And this is what I tell people. I say, go somewhere where somebody is building an airplane of some kind, where welding is involved, where fabric, and talk to them discuss how much time you're going to spend. It's not going to be easy. One of the things I've seen, you know, we've sold probably on the order of 600 sets of plans, and yet there aren't that many of them finished. And one of the reasons is they get finished basically with the airframe, and they get ready to uh, buy an engine, and they go out here and say, well, what kind of engine would you put on it? And I said, well, I would put a Rotec radial, or I'd put a Rotex 912S, or a, a 914. And they go, well, those engines are like 15000 to $30,000, right? Well, what about a Corvair engine? What about a Subaru? And, and you get that. And to me, I just, you know, it's not going to work for you. It might fly, but you're not going to be happy with it. You need to count the cost at the beginning because it's a fairly involved project. I wouldn't tell anybody otherwise, but it is doable. There's not a lot of aesthetics. It's flat, slab-sided. I did all that intentionally so it wouldn't be hard to build. You know, it's not any compound curves or anything like that. You just lay it flat on a table, weld it up like a ladder, Stand it up, get everything vertical, heat the members, and pull them together at the tail post. That's not easy, but it's not rocket science again either. It, How should people contact you if they want to get plans or more information? Do you have a website? I do have a website, littlewingautogyro.com. Email me. I will answer every email. If you have 100 questions, I'll answer 100 questions. And, I mean, that's a commitment I make. To, and if you're interested in plans and you want to talk to me or co communicate with me about it, email. And uh, I check it every day. Well, Ron, thanks for taking some time. This is a really neat machine. We look forward to seeing it fly. Thank you.